How is everyone today? I want to welcome everybody that's here with us in person, as well as uh, those joining us on our alternate uh, methods of worship, uh, via whether it be listening to the radio in the parking lot or uh, listening a little later after we get the sermon uploaded. Um, one big announcement, I'm not going to uh, take away from you that you're all intelligent enough to read the bulletin and look on the website, but something I want to remind everybody about is the congregational meeting on August 9th. On behalf of the session, the PNC, um, and myself personally, I want to extend the invitation for everybody to, if at all possible, to try to be here uh, as a congregation, whether it be here in person or, or outside. Uh, listening on the radio to where we can uh, to where we can all be a part of this uh, big decision in the life of our church uh, so I hope to see everyone with there um, uh, please uh, please keep those in need and your thoughts and prayers as we continue our week and without anything else I'll turn it over to Laura I'll turn it over to Frankie Turn it over to Laura. Okay. All right. Hang on. Sorry. I'm having an issue here. Okay. So we're going to greet each other again. We're going to practice our sign language if you want to. So you start with your hands together like this and then flip them over. And then you're going to go down for peace. Be with you. Y'all did great and also with you when you want to do it back. So we're going to do that one more time. Peace be with you and also with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord.
Good morning. Please join me in reading along silently with our call to worship. Wisdom is shown by her deeds. Wisdom is made manifest in acts of justice. Wisdom is revealed in acts of healing. Wisdom shines forth in acts of grace. May we be people of wisdom, disciples of Jesus Christ, servants of the Holy One. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us rest in God's mercy as we pray together. We don't like to admit it, God, but we are often quick to blame and slow to understand. We often allow ourselves to behave in ways that do not reflect our creation in your image. We judge, we are overly critical, and we withdraw when things do not go as we want. We are blown about by every change and chance in life. Forgive our foolish ways and set our hearts and minds in the way of wisdom that we may faithfully grow and mature. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow and courage to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please turn to the back of your bulletin for the affirmation of faith. We are a community of faith. We share a vision of God, a God whose spirit is love, accessible to all yet beyond our knowing, the source of all being, the way leading to wholeness, the spirit which pervades everything. We search for the meaning of God and our own experience revealed in those sacred stories which have been passed down to us. We tell them again and again of God the Creator, the Almighty, 
who made everything that is and saw that it was good. Of Jesus of Nazareth, who in history lived among us, healed the afflicted, taught, suffered, and died. He forgave those who crucified him. In the mystery of the resurrection, he continues to live more profoundly through the ages, the incarnation of love, the Christ, to whom his disciples have responded, my Lord and my God. He shows us the way which leads to the reconciliation of all things, saying, whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. It is the way of love, compassion, justice, forgiveness, and peace. Of the spirit, the breath, the wind of God, the giver of life, the holy wisdom who inspires the people of God to cry out for justice, for the powerless and oppressed, to see the presence of God in every created thing, and to respond with love. thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. But I know we're all searching for answers Only you provide cause you know just What we need before we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are, it's who you are it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us oh it's love so undeniable I, I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you could draw me deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 love. You're a good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am.
Good morning, First Presbyterian Spruce Pine. This is the last time I get to be able to say that to you all. Let me take this opportunity to say thank you for the privilege and the honor of being able to be on this part of your journey with you. And I pray God's blessings on you on this exciting part of your next journey. Our first reading is going to be from Matthew in chapter 3, verses 13 to 17, and verses 31 to 32. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so for now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened up to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And verses 31 to 32. And chapter 13. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. And our second reading this morning is one of my favorites. It is from 1 Kings, uh, chapter 3, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people so numerous that they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Then Solomon awoke, and it had been a dream. He came to Jerusalem, where he stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He offered up burnt offerings and offerings of well-being and provided a feast for all of his servants. This is the word of the Lord. 
thanks be to God. Let us pray. Through these very human words, may your holy word be heard and lived. Amen. You and I are going to cover a lot of ground this morning. We're going to talk about voices and dreams and seeds and total delight. Are you ready? I have a question for you. Do you ever get tired of the voices? I know, I know. When I ask that question, people look at me like I've lost my mind. Well, you have to have one in order to lose it, but that's another whole sermon. But we all have these voices, whether we hear them or not. Everybody does. For me, they are the voices that tell me to keep moving and working regardless of how I feel. It is not really a matter of whether you hear the voices, but when you hear them. I think I hear them most often when I'm long past tired and long past feeling anything. And by the way, they usually get up 20 minutes before I do every morning. To tell you the truth, it's more like one voice. It's a voice that tells you things that aren't true, but you believe them anyway. This voice, my inner critic, which I call IC for short, is one that never clocks out and is always working overtime. Inner critic, that's what I call it. I use the neutral pronoun because sometimes that critic's voice is male and sometimes it is female, but regardless of the gender, I can tell you that IC and I have had a lot of conversations. There's just so much to accomplish during any given day. Even when you're healthy and full of energy, more often than not, you just feel like a hamster on a wheel. Or to paraphrase one author who said, what we want most to know remains unknowable. But that doesn't stop us from trying to hold on to the divine any way we can. We would be better served by trying to hold the ocean in our hands. Solomon says about as much in another text this morning. He had a dream in a place called Gibeon where God came to him and asked him what he wanted. God said, what should I give you? Ask. God, he said, you have been faithful and steadfast to my father who was faithful to you. He was king and you blessed him and now you have made me king and I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. I see and I have had a lot of conversations with each other over the years. Well, they're more like monologues with I see doing all the talking. Let me give you some examples. But before I do that, I want you to know that everything that I see says is a complete lie. Author Jim Palmer once wrote, Those voices in your head, the ones telling you that you're not good enough, the ones warning you that there is much to fear, the one insisting that you don't measure up, the one with the story that something is wrong with you, the one saying that you can never have what your heart desires, the one always badgering you about what you should do, the one always reminding you that you should be thinner or smarter or richer or more accomplished, the one that calls into question your worth and value and beauty, the one that adds conditions to God's love and always has God's complete acceptance out of reach, the one that wants to convince you that you're not deserving of love, the one that reminds you that you always seem to fail at making others happy, the one that finds everything that you do to be lacking, the one that says that your life is hopeless, the one that talks you out of your dreams, the one that says you don't have what it takes, the one that tells you that your life is an incurable mess, the one saying that you'll never have what the life that you want, 
the one reminding you of all your past failures, the one that rushes in and heaps discouragement on your head, the one that tells you to worry if anything good happens because it won't last or it will be taken away from you or messed up. I'll bet this sounds familiar. Everybody in this room can hear your own versions of this list running through your heads right now. It really doesn't matter whether you were raised by good or loving parents or not. This is not about your parents or caregivers or even God. This is about a world that values only what you do and not who you are. And from the very beginning, we have believed these lies. We have always believed that it is never, that it is always about what we do. And we have always believed that whatever we do is never good enough. For me, growing up, it was like, well, it was like living on a pirate ship. And the rule is the beatings will continue until morale improves. And of course, as we get older, we realize that we have internalized those voices and we don't know it. We don't realize we're on autopilot until someone or something else touches us. That's what happened to me one day when I was listening to those voices. And one of the leaders in that church reached out in love and saw what was going on with me. He reminded me simply of my own words to him and other leaders. Take care of yourself. It was kind of like John the Baptizer in the Jordan saying, Repent. That Greek word is metanoia. And the definition of that word is to see everything differently. And to think all this time you thought repent was just about religion. It's hard hearing your own words coming back to you, isn't it? especially when they're spoken in love and care. You and I have to walk the talk. Someone once said, there's no sense in walking anywhere to preach unless your walking is your preaching. We have to live, each and every one of us, as if we already have everything we need. God has already seen to that. By calling us by name before we ever knew God, at creation, in Egypt, in the wilderness, at Sinai, in Babylon, in the Jordan, at the cross, and right here in this place, in this wilderness, right here. These are not just ancient stories of people that we'll never know. These are all metaphors for our stories. You and I already have everything we will ever need. But we forget. We get lost in the doing, which is never enough, and lose sight of our being. Our being. That's what God talked about in the burning bush, remember? After God told him to go back to Egypt, where he was wanted for murder, Moses asked God, well, you know, they're going to ask me which God sent me. What do I say? What name do I give them? And God said, I will be what I will be. God, in effect, was saying, I am the very essence of being, fully present, fully alive, fully in this moment, right now. This presence. This awareness of all that this moment has to offer, that is God. There's a plaque in my office wall at home, right around the corner, that hangs just to my left as I write my sermons or anything else. And it says, be still and know that I am. Being still is hard, isn't it? The one, way, the one way that you can do that is simply to breathe. 
something that I forget to do as well. And something once again that I was reminded of this week. The staff or leaders of every church that I've ever worked in will tell you that it's one piece of advice that I most often give. Breathe. That is, stop. Focus on your breath. Get off the hamster wheel just for a moment. Breathe. It may possibly be the most powerful creative act we can ever do. Now why is that so important? Because focusing on your breath brings you into the present moment. And that's where God is. I am. And that's where dreams happen. Have you ever noticed that dreams are the primary vehicle that God uses throughout all of Scripture to communicate? Abraham, Sarah, Hannah, Hagar, Rachel, Rebecca, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Solomon. It was in the dream that Solomon heard God say, Ask me for what you want. And in the dream, Solomon heard himself ask not for fame or riches or even the life of his enemies, but for wisdom. Or as one translator put it, a hearing heart. Tell me, what does your heart hear? The relentless demands of an IC who will never be satisfied? Or the affirmations of a God who calls you beloved and says that you, you, are worth listening to. A God who identifies himself as the poor and the hungry and the lame and the imprisoned and all of those poor, hungry, lame and imprisoned voices inside of us. If you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me, he said. Could that be true right now? Not just 2,000 years ago. Could it be true now? We know what it means to hunger for hope, to be imprisoned by fear, to be pathetically poor in forgiveness, or to be lame lovers. We know the peace that comes when we let go and let God. It is the welcome smile of trust. It is a relaxing into things, into God. A God who says, I've got it. I've got you. I always have. Shh. It's okay. Breathe. What do we know about people who give us the time and the space that we need? People like God to wait however long it takes for light to shine in the places that we have kept in the dark. You know who those people are in your lives. People who embody patience and trust and love. You know these voices. They are like the saying, the saying from the Talmud. Every blade of grass has its own angel bending over it, saying, grow, grow. They are like the 14th century Sufi poet Hafez who said, ever since hearing your name, happiness has been running through the streets trying to find you. I've got to say that again. Ever since hearing your name, happiness has been running through the streets trying to find you. Listen. 
Can you hear your own heart hearing that? What do we need here in this place today to hear that? The journey from the head to the heart takes such a long time, it seems. Why does it take so long for the heart to hear what appears to be so obvious to the head? What is that process all about? I wonder if the ideas simply have to eventually drop into the heart. I wonder if it's about the patience that it takes for those ideas, like seeds, to germinate. He put another parable before them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the biggest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and shelter in its branches. Mustard seeds. Nearly invisible, like patience, like breath, like dreams. Yet what looks so insignificant and insubstantial and inconsequential is the very stuff of the kingdom of God. So, you might wonder what Jim Palmer ends up saying about the voices, about I see. Those voices, he says, they are not you. You are the one listening to the voices. Everyone has these voices. They are not unique to you. Throughout our lives, at our most impressionable moments, often very painful ones. Someone said or did something or something happened and we internalized a message about ourselves and the voice was born. Over time we become so attached to the voices and what they say that we actually act as if the voice and what it tells us is true and that it's who we are. It is not. You're the one listening to the voice. That you that is listening to the voice is the you you have to find. The you you have to listen to. The you you have to honor and express. Awareness is the key. When you hear the voice, be aware of it and act on that awareness. Say to yourself, It looks like the voice is back. Create a conversation between you and the voice. Interrupt the pattern. Create some distance between you and the voice. Make a conscious decision not to listen. One way to do this is to tell a friend, Hey, guess who showed up today? The voice. Awareness of and detachment from the voice diminishes its power. So, what is this God? What if this God, who we thought was always angry and had to be appeased, like I see, is really madly in love with us? What if this God, who we always thought was against us, is really for us? What if this God is not a being on a cloud that dispenses blessings and curses, but is the energy between us that binds us all together and makes us one? What if God in Jesus Christ is reaching even now into the universe, into this very room, and saying, Bob, Mary, George, Charlie, I love you completely and totally.
and without reservation. What if this God is calling you by your very name and calling you beloved? This is my beloved one with whom I am well pleased. Listen. Amen. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us present to God our lives and offerings, grateful for the gifts we have been given. And offering plates are in the center aisle and also located by the door as you leave the sanctuary. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of surprises, you call us from the narrowness of our traditions to new ways of being church, from the captivities of our culture to creative witness for justice from the smallness of our horizons to the bigness of your vision. Clear the way in us, your people, 
that we might call others to freedom and renewed faith. Jesus, wounded healer, you call us from preoccupation with our own histories and hurts to the daily tasks of peacemaking. You call us from privilege to protocol to partnership and pilgrimage, from isolation and insularity to inclusive community. Clear the way in us, your people, that we might call all others to wholeness and integrity. Holy transforming spirit, you call us from fear to faithfulness, from clutter to clarity, from a desire to control to deeper trust, from the refusal to love to a readiness to risk. Clear the way in us, your people, that we might know the beauty and power and danger of the gospel. And on this day, holy God, we pray your blessings on all those who need your special and tender care. Especially for Peyton and his family as he gets his treatment in the hospital. We pray for strength and for hope and for the assurance of your presence with all of them and for all those who need your special care and presence this day. Guide and direct us, O oh God, and help us to live in the hope that you always promise to those who wait. For we pray in your holy name. Amen. May God bless you with discomfort. Discomfort at easy answers and half-truths and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger. Anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people so that you may work for justice and freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears, tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, war, 
so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children and to all people everywhere. Amen.